Hello viewers. Welcome to the channel Amazing Civil Engineering Studies. Time to enter the world of civil engineering. Here we will learn about different concepts related to civil engineering. Please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for more new updates. In today's video we are going Soil to discuss engineering. about Seepage and quicksand condition Seepage Groundwater is frequently encountered at some of the construction sites. The movement of water through the soil under a hydraulic gradient is called a seepage. A hydraulic gradient is supposed to exist between two points if there exists a difference in the hydraulic head at the two point. The seepage of water will pose some problem like Loss of stored water through an earth dam or foundation Settlement of structures that are constructed on compressible soils due to consolidation effect. Instability for soil slopes. Force on hydraulic structure due to the pressure exerted by the percolating water. For studying the seepage forces, Laplace equation is best suited. The solution of two Laplace equations for the potential functions and flow function takes the form of two sets of orthogonal curves. Flow lines These set of curves represent the trajectories of seepage. The space between the two adjacent flow lines is assumed to be a flow channel with an impervious boundary at both ends such that water does not cross the flow lines. Equipotential lines These set of curves represent lines of equal head. The head loss caused by water crossing two adjacent equipotential lines is termed the potential drop. Flow net The entire pattern of flow lines and equipotential lines is referred to as a flow net. Thus, a flow net is a graphical representation of head and direction of seepage at every point. The properties of flow net are as follows. Equipotential and flow lines intersect or meet orthogonally. The potential drop between any two adjacent equipotential lines is the same. The quantity of water flowing through two adjacent flow channels is the same. Velocity of flow is more in small size square figures so as to keep the discharge same. The angle of intersection between each flow line and an equipotential line must be 90 degree which means they should be orthogonal to each other. Equal quantity of seepage occurs in each flow channel. A flow channel is a space between two flow lines. Head loss is the same between two adjacent potential lines. Flow nets are drawn based on the boundary conditions only. They are independent of the permeability of soil and the head causing flow. The space formed between two flow lines and two equipotential lines is called a flow field. It should be in a square form. Either flow lines or equipotential lines are smoothly drawn curves. Applications of flow net Flow net is useful to determine the following parameters in seepage analysis of soil. Rate of seepage loss 
seepage pressure uplift pressure exit gradient rate of seepage loss q using flow net the rate of seepage loss or seepage quantity can be determined using the below expression where k equals coefficient of permeability h equals head causing flow n f equals number of flow lines n d equals number of equipotential lines b equals width of the flow field l equals length of the flow field seepage pressure p s Seepage pressure at any point is determined by using the below mentioned formula where W equals unit weight of water H equals hydraulic potential after and potential drops It can be expressed as see below equations where h equals potential drop or drop in head between two adjacent equipotential lines uplift pressure p u the uplift pressure at any point within the soil mass can be found using the undermentioned formula it is also called as hydrostatic pressure where w equals unit weight of water h W equals piezometric head or pressure head equals total head elevation head. H. W equals H plus or minus Z. Exit gradient, I. Exit. The exit gradient is the hydraulic gradient at the downstream end of flow line where seepage water from the soil mass joins with free water at the downstream. Exit gradient can be expressed as where H equals potential drop or drop in head between two adjacent equipotential lines. L equals length of the flow field. Quicksand condition occurrence mechanism and preventive measures. Quicksand condition is the flotation of particles of cohesionless soil, like fine gravel and sand, due to vertical upward seepage flow. As sand boiling occurs, the bearing capacity and shear strength of the cohesionless soil decrease and the agitations of soil particles become apparent. Quicksand condition is not a type of soil but a flow condition that occurs in cohesionless soils. Practically, Boiling condition may occur when excavations are made below the water table and water is pumped out from the excavation pit to keep the area free from water. How quicksand condition occurs? Quicksand condition occurs when seepage pressure, which acts in the upward direction, overcomes the downward direction pressure due to submerged weight of soil, and the sand grains are forced apart. 
The result is that the soil has no capability to support a load. The soil that experiences quicksand condition would lose shear strength and bearing capacity. The shear strength of cohesionless soil depends on the effective stress. The water flows from left tank to the right tank such that the flow through the soil in the right tank is in the upward direction. Physical model The total stress at the bottom of soil sample is S equals Set times L The upward pressure at the bottom of the soil sample equals water pressure from the left tank. U equals W times H and L. Effective stress S equals SU. S equals SAT times L. W times H and L. S equals SAT times L. W X H W times L S equals Sub times L W times H For quick condition Where I is called hydraulic gradient Taking the specific gravity of soil as 2.65 and void ratio as 0.65, the value of I becomes unity. If I becomes unity, then I equals I. IEH slash L equals 1 or H equals L. This indicates that when quicksand condition is achieved, the head causing flow equals to the thickness of length of the specimen. The shear strength is given by The shear strength of a cohesionless soil is given by T equals SX tan F where T equals shear strength S equals effective stress F equals angle of internal friction when the effective normal stress equals O T equals zero If shear strength of ass oil is zero it behaves as liquid. In such situation the soil is said to be in quick condition. If the critical hydraulic condition is exceeded, the soil particles move upwards, and the soil surface appears to be boiling. During this stage, a violent and visible agitation of particles takes place. The discharge suddenly increases due to an increase in the coefficient of permeability in the process. If a weight is placed in the surface of the soil, it sinks down. When anatural soil becomes quick, it cannot support the weight of Amon or animal. Contrary to common belief, the soil does not suck the victim beneath its surface. As a matter of fact, quicksand behaves like alakid with at it weight twice that of water. Quicksand condition in daily life a person can easily float in it with about one-third of its body out of quicksand. But quicksand is highly viscous, movement in it would require a great effort and energy. A person may die by drowning, suffocation, 
if he gets tired and its head sinks into the quicksand. If a person is caught in quicksand, he should keep his head above the soil surface and move slowly towards the bank. He should try to catch some tree on the bank and try to pull himself out of quicksand. It is to be emphasized that quicksand is not a special type of sand. It is a condition that occurs in the sand when the effective stress is zero. If the critical gradient exceeds, the soil moves upward, and the soil surface appears to be boiling. The quick condition is also known as boiling condition. During this stage, aviolent and visible agitation of particles occurs. The discharge suddenly increases due to an increase in the coefficient of permeability occurred in the process. If a weight is placed on the surface of the soil, it sinks down. The soil behaves as alicid having no sheer strength. Quicksand cannot support the weight of man or animal and it behaves like alicid with a weight about twice that of water. A person can easily float in it with about one third of his body out of quicksand. However, Quicksand is highly viscous and movement in it would require a great effort and energy. A person may die by drowning, suffocation, if he gets tired and let his head fall into the quicksand in panic. If a person is caught in quicksand conditions, he should keep his head high above the soil surface and move slowly towards the bank. He should try to catch some tree on the bank or try to pull himself out the quicksand. When there is some surcharge on the cohesionless soils, the head required to cause quicksand increases. Quicksand Condition at Construction Site There are a number of construction sites which are susceptible to quicksand conditions. Excavations in granular materials behind cofferdams alongside rivers. Any place where artesian pressures exist i.e. where head of water is greater than the usual static water pressure. Behind river embankments to protect floods. How to avoid quicksand condition. It can be prevented by lowering the water table at the site before excavation or alternatively, by increasing the length of upward flow. Boiling condition is also common when a pervious sand stratum underlying a clay soil is in an artesian pressure condition. Thank you Achi. For now, please subscribe, like, share and do not forget to press bell icon.